I want to start off with an important PSA for those of us in the Dute Troop. The extremely talented hunting horn speedrunner Amadeus has started a hunting horn guide to help with some of the more in-depth numbers and info of the hunting horn. Check his first video out on echo attacks and stay tuned for more later on. So first off, I should say, if you're one of those people that think that if a horn doesn't have an attack up L song list, that it's bad, this video is probably not going to be for you. This is it. This is how you do a hunting horn. If they followed suit with the way that they did the light break tambri, I would have very little, if any, complaints about any hunting horn to date. Why do I say that? Is it overpowered? No. Did they make some outrageously cool design? I wouldn't say outrageous, but they did a very good job with the design because it fits the monster so well. So what exactly is it that they did that makes me say this is one of the greatest horns they've made yet? Let's take a good hard look at the light break tambri. Jumping in on the stats, we start off nice with a quite impressive 1260 raw attack. This is outdone only by the OG Rajong horn, the Den Den Doom Sounder. The sharpness is pretty neat because if you look at it too fast, you think it has that Ruiner Nergagante kind of comfy white sharpness, but right at the end you'll see a little sliver of purple sharpness. I don't care if it's just a wee tiny bit, having purple sharpness already built in is always a plus. The affinity at base is 0%, but like I always say, it could be worse. They could have made it something outrageous like negative 30, but they'd never do that, right? We then come to a bit of a nitpick that I have thematically, only a 270 blast for a monster that literally spams explosive goop, especially when his less ragey counterpart got a weapon with 510 blast. Right after that nitpick, we get back into good graces in a huge way. The slots on this weapon are the things you dream of, especially for a person like me that will absolutely sacrifice skills just to fit an evade extender. Not only a 4th level slot which alone would be great, but also a 3rd level slot to go with it. Are you starting to see why I'm so hyped for this horn? Now we come to the song set. I have to start off by saying it's a bittersweet thing that it got the All Ailments Negated song list because this makes it a lot harder to break out Teostra's Musica, a horn that treated me so well even in the base world game. But what I love about it getting the song list is the fact that it really fits Raging Bracky. Explosions, explosions, and more explosions because you get that abnormal status increase. This brings me back to my point about it being weird that it has such a low blast. If it had a higher blast, I would literally call this a perfect weapon representation. But my rambling aside, we all know this song set is fantastic utility wise. All Ailments Negated is arguably my favorite song to use in Iceborne based solely off how much of a game changer it really is. And just a little tip, if you or anyone you know is having trouble with Raging Bracky, that delayed blast status you get from walking in his goop, yeah, All Ailments Negated stops that too. Divine Protection is something that just gets even better the further down this rabbit hole of challenge we go. I know there has already been a time or two where I've been pinned down by Furious Rajong and right at the end where he slams you down, the Monster Hunter God shot me a text on the side of the screen and said, don't worry dude, the damage was reduced, and it probably ended up saving my life. Echo Wave Dragon is what it is, a beautiful burst damage dealer that always leaves me smiling when I land it. Now we come to one of my newfound favorites, Speed Boost and Evade Window. I promise you guys, just try it right now. Pause this video after I'm done explaining and just try it. Run Evade Extender with this song active as well as self-improvement. I can promise you, it's life-changing. Now, the build that I decided to use for this one is kind of boring, but it gets the job done nonetheless. You have your DPS usuals in there with Crit Eye, Crit Boost, and Weakness Exploit, which of course they're all maxed out, especially for a neutral affinity horn like this. Master's Touch is something I lean towards in most of my builds, solely for the comfort it brings, but for this horn especially, 
and that little sliver of purple sharpness it has, I stuck with Master's Touch for sure. Attack boost to level 4 for that extra affinity, and because we're rocking the brute chest, so why not? Evade extender because I'm making it my life goal as a Monster Hunter content creator to get you all to at least try out the dream that is a maxed out evade extender in your build. Agitator because if you're facing frequently angry boys, then you might as well get some extra damage out of it. Let's take a listen to the soundtrack. So if you've watched my horn reviews before, you know that I'm a big fan of the soundtracks that don't have a lot or too much going on. This one is right up my alley. The sound is perfect for the design, as it sounds like it would if you clang the ball inside the horn over and over. It has an eerie distortion to it that feels appropriate as well for the nightmares you'll be bringing monsters with this horn. I even like the little didgeridoo they snuck in that last recital. When we talk about the design of the horn, it's easily one of my favorites. The color scheme looks great, and it even has a nice effect that comes in when you're buff. The yellow in the horn gradually goes from yellow to orange to red, before going backwards back to yellow. Having this effect repeat is such a simple but rewarding thing for them to put in. If you want to see a giant bell done right, look no further than the light break tambri. And if you want to see a bell done wrong, go ahead and check out the gold rathian hunting horn. Take a little peek inside the horn for a nice surprise too while you play your songs. It actually looks like and feels like it was crafted from Raging Bracky, straight from the tail. Which is more than we can say for the OG Bracky hunting horn we got. This one, it's rugged, tough, and illuminates sheer power just like Raging Brachydeos. So when I was using this horn on hunts, I felt nothing but pure joy. The numbers alone, without a single augment on the horn, were satisfying, but just seeing that I was swinging around a raging bracky tail, exploding monsters was all I could ever want from a horn, and more. Could it do more damage if they gave it an attack up L song list? Of course, but I'm happy they didn't. All of this is clearly predicated by the fact that Safi horns can fill whatever niche we want it to fill. Having a horn that isn't a Safi horn to fill the all ailments role that doesn't feel like you're sacrificing damage is a welcome thing to me. And it just fits thematically. When you think Raging Bracky, you think of explosive power, and this horn is able to boost that explosive power, and that just makes sense to me. They supplemented this by giving it the second highest base raw and purple sharpness off the bat. Again, excluding Safi horns. I really cannot express how well I think they did with this weapon. It shows out in the field too. If you're new to the Dute Troop or still don't know how much of a game changer All Ailments Negated is, just take it into a multiplayer hunt and play that song. See how many messages you see popping up saying, I can't move, because you won't. In solo play, throw it on and see how much damage you take from Goldrathian's Devastating Poison when you get hit with one of its attacks that applies the poison status. And like I said before, throw this song on and then run through Raging Brachydeos' explosive goop and see if you get that delayed blast status up in your bar. Because you won't. Then you can just let your fellow hunters kiss your feet after the hunt is successfully over. As I said before, what really seals the deal is that you have all of this power in a utility sense, but you don't have to sacrifice that raw power while doing it. The numbers truly aren't bad, especially when we're talking about a horn that has status built in and absolutely no attack up songs. As far as blast horns go, minus Safi, you'll be hard pressed to see me use another one in a solo setting. Group wise, if attack up is preferred, then of course I'll go Safi or Basil. Just do not underestimate the power of the All Elements Negated song list. Combined with the stuff I said earlier, you can even give all those other slowpoke weapons a taste of that speed boost we consistently get to enjoy. When I tell you that they did this horn right, that's exactly what I mean. From the stats, to the soundtrack, to the design, to the song list, this is the way hunting horns should be done, especially unique and deserving ones like this. But that's going to be it for this one. The Raging Bracky fight was fun, but definitely a challenging one. And that fits the theme of this video too. The fact that it's such a challenging fight, and that we get a weapon of this caliber as a reward. This very easily could be my favorite horn in the game right now. Up next, of course, will be the Demon Lord Wardrum, aka the Furious Rajong Hunting Horn. Stay tuned for that review. If you liked the video, please do let me know with a thumbs up. Comment below what your thoughts are on this beautiful blast horn. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Iceborne, Hunting Horn, 
and other Monster Hunter content. Dudes forever, have a good night, and happy hunting.